Welcome to Deep River Farm, folks. I appreciate you joining me today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about uh, vertical farming here in this video and what it is. But before we did so, I wanted to touch base with you and show you how this is working out with the winter sowing in the poor man's greenhouse. You can go back and look at the videos in the library called Winter Sowing and uh, what we did there. And then there's a follow-up video on it called CC Rider uh, helped out with the milk jugs in the following video of those two in a row. And I wanted to show you how this is working. If you can see inside, you've got water droplets forming where this is sweating. This is providing, and you can see one of them just see it kind of run when I tap on it, uh, which is providing moisture to the uh, plant itself. Uh, the seed, I'm sure, has not come up yet. Uh, I'm gonna check right quick just to see if I see anything. Uh, not yet, but uh, it's coming. Just be a matter of a few days. We just put these in there on the 8th of March, so anyway. As you can see, I've already got two my uh, my cages ready for my squash. Now I do this so that when the squash comes up, I can direct these leaves and at least get them laid out on the first and the second uh, cage level here. And that's to give the airflow in this thing for the squash. Now I'm gonna pan around here right quick and let you see what we got going here. And we're gonna focus here on the trellises. There we go. Now on these trellises, folks, I use what's called mule tape. And these things are about 18 to 24 inches off of the ground. Some people run them right down on the ground. But what has to happen here is these, these are set up for pole beans. And what has to happen is the pole bean has got to get up big enough for it to begin to develop shoots. And once the shoots are developed, that's what's going to grab on to the mule tape and it'll run right up the mule tape. Now, another thing I'm going to tell you too, a lot of people don't know this. You see these vertical lines here, like so? This tends to be where the bean likes to climb when it's going up the trellis. <clears throat> these vertical lines and this is going to be the majority of the location that you're going to find all of your green beans on so if you put your vertical lines in this is where you it makes it easy you know you're going to have the majority of your beans where your vertical lines are uh, on your trellis the purpose of vertical farming folks is airflow you want plenty of airflow through your uh, produce. The airflow prevents moisture from setting on the underneath of your leaves and things which creates a fungus which leads to disease. So the object is is to get the airflow. Now when I was a kid I got plenty of uh, uh, help doing the uh, green beans and we drove posts in the ground and run streams through them I had no idea that was vertical farming. We used to put our tomato cages up for the tomatoes to grow through, and I had no idea that was vertical farming back then. But vertical farming is very important now to reduce the risk of disease and to get plenty of uh, water, uh, plenty of sunlight, plenty of airflow, and everything on your crops. It benefits tremendously for this to happen but the biggest thing is it reduces disease and fungus. So folks, <clears throat> as you can see here, we got plenty of uh, trellis space here. I have approximately 8, 16, 24, 32. I've got about 48 feet right now in trellis. And on these 48 feet, <clears throat> 
doing this right by vertical farming. And let me drop the camera down. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about here. This enables you to be able to grow more in a less space. Let's take for instance right here, folks. I can literally plant my beans right next to my, almost next to the board here on the outer board. And I can plant a row of beans across here. Well, I can drop back another six inches and grow a second row in here. So this 48 feet that I've got here by growing two rows of beans like so, they're gonna run the same trellis. I'm getting ready to have 96 feet just on this one side. So what I do folks by doing this, I grow, uh, I'll grow a uh, half runner bean on this side and on the other side, I'll grow another 96 feet of uh, Kentucky uh, Blue Lake. And both of these are pole beans. Now that's what you want to always remember. When you're running green beans, you want a pole bean. You don't want a bush bean. A bush bean has no need for this. A bush bean is going to be like a small bush. And you'll be able to, to get your beans off of it, off of a, a little old stool or something in the garden. But this, once your beans come in and a pole bean, you're going to have a few beans down low. And then, folks, you can stand up and do all your picking or sit in a chair and do your picking. But I wanted to show you what the benefits here in growing a vertical garden is in a raised bed. You can grow just as much in a raised bed, if not more, uh, than you can in a garden in an in-ground garden. Now on an in-ground garden, you're just gonna be able to pretty much lay off one row. And that's gonna be it because you have problems with weeds. Where in a raised bed like this, if you have a weed coming up, which I don't see any, you can just basically just pull it out with your fingers. Where in a garden in that hard clay and stuff, you about gotta chop it in too with a hoe or something like that. And you've got to have all this space in between your rows on a raised, on a in-ground garden to be able to get equipment in there to uh, plow it and till it to keep the weeds down in between uh, your rows to be able to have a walk area, a place you can get to harvest your pro produce. Or in a raised bed, something like this, you can plant two rows right close together you can also, if you wanted to really have a big crop of beans, but it makes it more difficult to reach, and there's a lot of work in the initial stages of working stuff inside, you can run a droop rope in between, and it droop down to about that close to the soil into your raised beds, and those green beans will grab a hold of those droop ropes and run to the outside and come up but you're gonna have a lot of beans in the beginning down low. You about gotta lay on your stomach to get them. But that's why I just like to run two rows on the outside. And then on the middle, I've got a, I've got a board hanging up in the middle up here. And that's where I tend to put my, uh, my sprinkler and stuff. That way it can, I can get it in here and get it where it can water both sides real easy if I need to do so if it gets uh, where it gets too dry. Folks, I appreciate you joining me today as we've talked about vertical farming and how that works. Thanks a lot for joining me today here on Deep River Farm. I hope everybody has a blessed day.